to Get Real with Estiel, a woman empowerment podcast hosted by Estiel Albaba. Hello and welcome to another episode of Get Real with Estiel. Today is Wednesday, October 25th, 2017. The background noise that you're hearing is actually some colleagues of mine. Uh, I am at a leadership conference and I have some people in the background just chatting, but I took uh, a corner seat because I wanted to record this episode as I am committed to uh, delivering three episodes a week so far. I mean, this could change as we go, but for now, I think this is a frequency that I want to commit to. So uh, in this leadership development course, I've been learning so many interesting things and I really want to share them with you because I feel like the best way to learn is to ultimately teach and ultimately serve uh, our humanity with the lessons that we come across. So I thought I'd share with you uh, some other reflections that I was able to take away from the sessions and one of them that was uh, something that we uh, discussed earlier this week is about the different learning styles that different people have and apparently there's four different categories that people usually tend to fall into so you're either a converger an accommodator an assimilator or a divergent uh, so the way this works is um, this is how people spread on the spectrum of how they analyze information is it based on data or is it based on intuition so that's the vertical um, axis basically so the further up you are the more intuitive you are the further down you are on the uh, on the horizontal axis uh, sorry vertical axis the more rational you are and then you have the vertical axis the left uh, the further left you go is the doing portion the more right you go is the thought portion so essentially, think about it this way. So there's a, a horizontal line that crosses a vertical line. So the top right corner uh, makes up the uh, divergence. So the divergence are those people who love to brainstorm, who are always bringing up new ideas, who are constantly thinking of something new to bring forward to the team and lead the team. And I want you to be reflecting on these things as I'm sharing them with you to see which quadrant do you actually fall yourself uh, fall into and which quadrant do the people that you work with fall into because that's one way of understanding yourself and the team around you and that's how you can bring even more value to your workplace and to your environment and to your ultimately lives because you can even apply that in your own personal lives so going back to what I was saying the uh, divergence are those who actually uh, spend a lot of time analyzing data but from an intuitive perspective they, they want to just brainstorm always constantly bringing new ideas the downfall to that is potentially being so stuck up on that world where it's just producing ideas but not necessarily bringing these ideas to fruition uh, so it's just being stuck with how many ideas are good enough to actually uh, pursue the second quadrant is the bottom uh, right quadrant and that these ones are the uh, assimilators the assimilators are those who actually get stuck up on the data so they're analyzing rational data that's coming through they're getting stuck up on the numbers the analysis so it's almost like analysis paralysis so they're awesome to consult when it comes to what risk management is all about but the downside to that is because they're always thinking about the data too harshly sometimes it's just like how much data is enough data to actually have before you want to pursue it and, and bring it into fruition so that's the downside of the assimilators. Now, if we were to move into the left uh, 
uh, left bottom quadrant, we go to the convergence. Convergence are doers, but they're ones that analyze the data from a logical perspective. So they analyze logically and then they do, they just jump on doing. However, the risk that they, the convergers get into is simply jumping on uh, the action too fast without taking time to consult with other people. They just want to get it over with. They, they're rationally thinking about the information that was presented to them and they just want to jump onto it uh, before making sure that it's actually the right uh, course of action is. Now the last uh, piece of the puzzle is the accommodators and that's pretty much the quadrant that I fell into. Accommodators are also doers, but they rely more on, on intuitive and experience-based data than, than logical-based data. So they don't really want to be hung up on the numbers and the, the information that can be holding them back. They just want to jump into the doing mode, and that's how they learn. They learn by doing, uh, but they want to also be able to inspire the groups around them. And the interesting thing about assimilators, or sorry, accommodators, is they could be wasting a lot of resources in the future had the course of action they initially committed to been the wrong one because they didn't take the time initially to analyze the data that's actually presented to them or that's available. So this is the category I've fallen. Every single uh, category that I just mentioned has its positives and weaknesses. The most important thing of all this, in my opinion, is awareness. Once you have awareness on your learning style and the styles around you, then you're capable of pretty much making the most out of your leadership style and bringing the most value out of yourself and the teams. This is ultimately what, uh, what this episode is about. The four learning styles that people fall into and um, I'm gonna pause it right here and I'm gonna share more information with you once I get to my room so that I have my manual to even uh, share with you more concrete examples of how these learning styles come into place. So I'm gonna pause it here for now. I just shared with you these things that were on top of my head, but I will get back to you very shortly. So I'm back with you in my room so the noise is gone and I'm able to better concentrate on the material that I'm delivering and I'm using the uh, course material as a as a reference here just to give you a bit more context to these four different uh, learning styles that we were talking about. So the first one is the diverger. The diverger is simply combines the concrete experience with the reflective observation. So they're the ones who have um, they view situations from many different viewpoints. They spend a lot of time uh, brainstorming in order to gather information. They prefer working in groups. They listen with an open mind and they observe rather than they take action. So they're, they're the ones sitting pretty much on the uh, sidelines and they're observing, but they're really collecting every single piece of information they can. Uh, and they're intuitive about it, so they're they're uh, they add a lot of value to the t to the team, but that's their strength essentially. Now the uh, learning style here that was used, uh, they're they're best in viewing concrete situations from many different viewpoints, like I was mentioning. Uh, there's a section here that talks about the ideal uh, work. Uh, environment for these type of learners and they're usually in arts and entertainment and communications or social social services so these are the divergers now the second one is assimilators these ones uh, like we talked about they're in the uh, left bottom quadrant they put information into a concise logical form they're more focused on abstract ideas and concepts they're less focused on people and learning but they're way more focused on logic and practical value but they need time to think things through and they love books and data and numbers they're just so caught up on these type of um, uh, collections and these are the people that would be successful in sciences and math and social and physics sciences, uh, legal professions and research and higher education. So anything that requires a lot of data and, and a lot of uh, attention to details would, would be great for assimilators. Now, convergers, they're, they're the ones who are best at finding practical use for these data and theories. So they solve problems and make decisions 
by finding the solutions to questions and problems. They're more focused on the technical tasks and problems and they're less interested in people issues. So they just like to experiment. They like to get things done relying heavily on the data that's available, not so much on the people involved in that process. Uh, and that's why they're great in computer science and engineering. They're great in finance and economics. They're great in medicine and applied sciences. And I think, um, you know, reflecting on that, my brother is a great converger and he is in medicine and my sister is a great converger and she's in engineering. So that's the quadrant they both belong to. Now, accommodators, last but not least, this is the quadrant I belong to. Uh, accommodators learn primarily from hands-on experience. They act on instinct rather than logical analysis. So I know the data is there, but I trust my intuition. Uh, they enjoy challenging experiences. They love to carry out plans and they're very action oriented. And people in this particular quadrant, they are great in management and human resources. They're, they're great in sales and marketing and teaching, training, nursing, government. So anything to do with the leadership, uh, they're, they're great in it. Uh, and these are the learning styles that I wanted to share with you today. And I hope you find this helpful in not just your own self-awareness. So it's good to understand which group of people you identify yourself best with but that's not to say that once you belong to a category that's it you're in that category different situations call for different learning styles and objectives and sometimes you have to adapt to the situation that you're dealing with so for example if risks are very high in a specific situation you cannot afford to be an accommodator like myself because if the risks are so high you need to spend a lot of uh, a lot of time analyzing certain information uh, looking at the data, looking at the numbers, assessing the risk, and taking your time and planning things strategically before you actually take an action uh, versus accommodators who actually just jump into taking action. So it's good to have self-awareness and it's also good to understand people around you so that you can bring the best out of yourself, the environment, and ultimately the work you're trying to do. So I hope you found that helpful. And with that, I'll leave you to future episodes. Friday, uh, two days away, we'll record a new one. I look forward to future episodes where we can learn, grow, and most importantly, get real together. Take care.